Hello, my name is Jackson Wood, and I'm the Director of Industry Strategy here at Descartes in our Global Trade Intelligence Business Pillar. Today, I'm going to be speaking with my colleague, Brian Hodgson, General Manager of our Global Trade Intelligence Business here at Descartes. And we're going to be covering what organizations need to do to be thinking about recognizing return on investment for enterprise class denied party screening software. Brian will share insights on working with internal stakeholders, as well as the work that organizations need to do to build their business case and ultimately be able to recognize value from the investments they make in enterprise denied party screening. Brian, to kick things off, maybe you could just talk a little bit about why organizations need to have a denied party screening solution. Yeah, thank you, Jackson. Uh, and, and look, there's the regulatory landscape is expanding and it seems to be expanding faster than ever. I mean, last year you had the Ukraine conflict. You have things like the uh, US FLPA for forced labor. You know, traditionally it's been industries such as aerospace and high tech financial services that were most affected by these regulations. But over the last number of years, we've really seen that expand to really almost every vertical and most, you know, every different size of companies. Some of our fastest growing areas are really in, uh, you know, software companies that have users or uh, contractors that log onto a platform all around the world. So, you know, a combination of the growing regulations uh, and the impact on a broader set of industry is really what's driving that. Well, and it, you make a great point about how compliance really is becoming mission critical for all types of different organizations. You know, we've we've been in this business for the better part of 20 years, and it started with traditional aerospace and defense, high tech manufacturers. But as you as you rightly point out, it really is becoming something that just about every type of organization needs to think about. What's the, the type of collaboration and engagement that needs to be done internally to really start to get stakeholders aligned and internal support of, uh, in place to be able to begin the journey of deny party screening? Yeah, that's a great question because, you know, well, although while it's regulatory and, you know, it really has to, you have to comply by law, most of the stakeholders who are involved aren't the regulatory people. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's great to say, hey, we, it's regulatory. So you think, look, everyone sort of lines up, but everyone has their own business objectives and they're trying to, you know, it could be the head of sales trying to grow, uh, grow revenue, uh, so, you know, people in procurement trying to, trying to secure their supply chain, all those sort of things. They have their own initiatives. So one of the keys that we see is thinking about the various stakeholders, invite them early on to the discussion, uh, make sure they understand what the requirements are uh and the and the um the needs and then think of the processes that they may be involved with whether that's again i mentioned the head of sales are you screening during the sales process um or, or in the procurement process so mapping it into their process and look they many of them don't have they're really not going to have a compliance background so if they understand the objectives and then work together to how that can best be streamlined into their process to so it's not doesn't add time to their work it, and it ideally can uh, support their work rather than asking them to do more things that aren't their core job is going to could going to create challenges. I mean, if you're asking a salesperson to screen, that's not exactly what they want to do. Well, and that's such an important point as well. That compliance isn't just about playing defense for organizations. It's also an enabler of growth, particularly in the example that you shared about having it be a part of the sales process, right? Like no organization wants their revenue generating team wasting time chasing opportunities that ultimately they won't be able to uh, fulfill because of a compliance issue. So obviously any of these types of investment decisions that need to be made in any type of organization are, are going to have a value and a return on investment component to them. Uh, Brian, in, in your experience working with customers, what are some of the, the tips or the suggestions you might share for uh, an organization to build a business case to invest in uh, denied party screening software? Yeah, no, that's a great question. The and, and when someone says ROI, often that means, look, I got to go and have a spreadsheet with this, what I'm going to you know, invest and here's the dollars I'm going to get back. Uh, and there, there's certainly some of that. I mean, certainly 
uh, you know, fines, they can range from $1,000. You know, recently there was a fine of almost $10 billion. That's going to be pretty punitive. Uh, although they're that, that, that really not that common. Other costs that could uh, come into play are, you know, if there's an audit, CBP comes in and checks. That could be a lot of time from your team, but also there may be legal fees associated with that. Uh, and again, both of those are risks. The other side of the coin is how to create value and working with the stakeholders uh, to ensure that as you're doing the screening, you're as comprehensive as possible, you have the right due diligence, um, and so you're avoiding those hard dollar implications, whether those are, mm. uh, you know, the audit, those sort of things, and then dovetailing in. I mean, if you think about the investment from a screening standpoint, really ranges from a few thousand dollars for a small, uh, maybe a few user screening solution to you know hundred thousand dollars or more for a large enterprise. How do organizations then go about measuring value or defining the the positive impact that the denied party screening software is having in their organization? Yeah, so there's a couple of uh, areas to create value. One is around operational excellence, and another is around competitive advantage. So if you look at a few common cases where customers create value, what we see, it's really around, we've talked about the business process, so it could be in the sales process uh, related to you know, either salespeople or CRM. Uh, more broadly, order fulfillment. So once that order comes in, how does that get fulfilled? It could be in procurement, in HR. You know, so starting with sales, some of the challenges that compliance can create are delays in customer onboarding, wasted effort, salespeople spending time when they're not doing you know, prospecting or sales or their core job. So if they're spending more time on, on screening, that's val that, that, that's not valuable, that's uh, you know, clerical time. Uh, never mind the risk that that could create because they're, they're not trained, they don't necessarily have the, have the expertise to even do the, the screening properly. So with the right solutions, these can be tackled by creating value around streamlining the process both the review, the screening process, as well as the reviewing and adjudication process, automating the rescreening process. So if you uh, get a customer, they're not on the list and then being able to, they may maybe get added later, being able to catch that. So, and doing that in a more automated way. And we often see people integrated into their CRM. Salesforce is very common CRM that we see people integrate to. And that, that the advantage there is that's hands-free for the salesperson. The salesperson is totally focused on their core job and you're screening all the right things with the right data and the right uh, configuration. So you're not leaving anything to human error. Real world example is a global SaaS provider. As I said, software providers are a fairly fast growing area for us. Um, so they're, be, they're able to re increase their sales response uh, and reduce time to revenue by integrating in screening with salesforce.com. Uh, so depending on the sales volume, number of salespeople, you know, we see some, if they're doing it manually, we'll see them spend, you know, 15 to 20 minutes a week. So if you think of a, of a sales team of, of 20 people, that's half of a salesperson work week uh, across that. So if you could, you know, there's a productivity. If you could have that, that bandwidth back, that's going to drive to uh, revenue and, and uh, growth. Another example is e-commerce order fulfillment. So we're seeing more direct e-commerce. So screening those things, the, the question is where to screen, how often to screen. If, you're, if your customers are ordering through a, with a shopping cart, that screen has to be instant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, know, you can't have time to, um, to review that because it's just not the consumer or customer's expectations. So that very automated process uh, becomes critical. And then the question is, if there are hits, what to do about it? So again, let's look at a real world example that we've worked with a customer on. So they've integrated in screening into the shopping cart. Uh, and you know, let's say they have 100 orders per week um, at 2,500 orders. That results in like 5,200 screenings a year. If their hit rate is two and a half percent, and and customers will often say, "Look, if we have a hit because of the instant need, we'll just decline the sale." That's mm -hmm. a lot of sales of three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So now, if you can reduce that hit rate even three quarters of a percent, that's going to create a hundred thousand dollars more in revenue. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, key is having the solution that can do that integration and fine tune that search tuning. So you're balancing the, you know, the risk of, of, uh, of making sure you're capturing those hits, but not too high a hit rate where you're losing a bunch of revenue. Well, and I think it, you make so many good points there. I think the big thing to think about in any context of, of any type of organization is how many different types of platforms and external facing uh, technology that uh, more and more businesses are, are relying on. Even in B2B context, we see a lot of organizations building their own e-commerce platforms that aren't necessarily showing up into the general public, but are being utilized to simplify uh, interactions with their existing customer base. And so being able to leverage integrated and automated denied party screening within all of those different business systems. And as you say, having a centralized adjudication and review platform is essential uh, to being able to maintain the visibility and the, and the connectivity of all of those different activities. Maybe Brian, you could also touch on the importance of the frequency of screening and, and ultimately how that can simplify the, the compliance process for organizations as well. On the sales front. So are you screening, you know, your, is it a consumer type uh, scenario where shipping things out to consumers or uh, are you as B2B? So that will determine like sort of where, how are you going to screen that once at when they become a customer and then rescreen that, let's say daily, because you know they're an existing customer for a long relationship, that would be in the B2B case. In the, in the consumer case, it might be screening simply just, you know, each order as it comes in and you don't worry about it after that because your business relationship is that long. Another scenario is the length of the sales cycle. You know, if, you're, if you have a, you know, maybe a more of a build to order type uh, sales model where you can take the order, it takes you know, a few weeks or maybe even months to get that fulfilled, or even a few days, you may, you know, screen at the front end uh, and then also, again, dynamically or daily screen that uh, automatically so you're not having to do that on an ongoing basis. But if that if that entity ends up getting added to uh, a list, then you'll, you'll be alerted immediately and mitigate that risk and, and then also reduce any wasted effort. Maybe in our, just the, the last, Bit of our conversation here brian you could share a little bit of how organizations actually avoid potential pitfalls and ultimately make sure that they are getting the most out of their solution start with making sure the stakeholders are aligned and then this mapping out the various processes of where screening is going to be so we've talked about sales we've talked about procurement could be visitors could be you know like in the software world sometimes there's contractors who are involved developers that that might get screened uh, so think of all of the various entities that might get screened and the stakeholders in the organization that do that, mapping out that process. And then you asked about sort of when to screen and volume and integrating. So you may have different systems uh, to integrate. So thinking about a solution that can integrate in a flexible way, uh, but also maybe it's not feasible to integrate or the volumes don't warrant that investment. Uh, so, you know, having a uh, different ways to handle those solutions might be online screening, might be batch uh, as, as means to do that. So really flexible ways that what's the right, you know, what's the right tool to fit the use case and that stakeholder and their business process to make sure that screening happens from a compliance standpoint and minimum, you know, really is the most in terms of a productivity with, with not uh, overhead. And yeah. there could be limitations on IT resources and again, having those flexible solutions allows you to really fit the integration and the automation to what your capabilities are on the IT side. Brian, thanks so much for sharing the the insights and your experience. Uh, key takeaways, uh, I think, are a couple. So the first is just remembering that you know ROI is a useful metric, but it can be a, a little bit deficient in capturing the full benefit that a uh, uh, denied party screening software can offer to an organization, whether that's in increasing sales velocity or providing greater visibility in the event of an audit, uh, or ultimately really just being able to connect different parts of the organization together from a risk mitigation perspective. And a best in class 
denied party screening software solution is going to offer you that flexibility, whether that's in deployment options, integration into business systems, but also the single source of truth with respect to looking at results and ultimately making final compliance decisions based on that information. Um, I hope that this has been insightful to, to all of you who have uh, joined us today. Obviously, this is a complex topic and it can be a challenge to navigate through all the different information that's out there. Um, if you're interested in, in taking a, a look at our technology and ultimately transforming your compliance um, organization, uh, please feel free to contact us, uh, the information that's on the screen, and we would be thrilled to speak with you and your organization about how we may be able to uh, help improve your overall screening activities. Thank you again for joining us and thank you again, Brian, for taking the time to speak with me today.